You know, I've been looking at this Superboy S a lot recently, just kind of playing with it and trying it out. And overall, it's kind of grown on me a little bit. It's actually not a terrible device. Is it a little large? Yeah, look at it. It's, it's pretty big. But for the most part, I've been relatively happy with it. Um, I had some issues in the beginning, as you saw in that unboxing video, where sound wasn't working at first and then it started working. Who knows why it was like that, but it's worked ever since. But I have yet to take it apart. And you know what we do here. We take these kind of things apart. I also haven't really seen anyone online take this thing apart anyway. So let's let's take apart the Superboy S. So I've been doing some serious looking around. And I again, I haven't really seen anyone take this thing apart. But I figure we'll go ahead and get this guy apart. Now, it looks like it's really only held together with some Phillips head screwdrivers. Uh, screwdrivers. I always say that for some reason. Screws. Um, so this actually this probably won't be a super long look really i mean this probably won't be a very long disassembly i'd assume it looks like we just have a standard set of uh rechargeable batteries here let's might have to give that guy a good whack to pop it out of there it's just plugged in these are um these are standards so you have a couple different kinds of uh like these rechargeable batteries these are more in the shape of like very long if you consider like double a sized batteries they're in here you can actually cut this open and take a look at it we're not going to do that because I don't want to cut open batteries. <laughs> um, from there, though, actually, it has a sticker under there. That's interesting. Item number, made in China. Go figure. I don't know. <laughs> I, th I think we all kind of understand that one. So I have my long neck kind of thin driver here to help us out because these are very, uh, very narrow screw holes here, especially at the bottom. I'm going to go around, get all these out, and then we'll pull the back off. All right, so we got that all apart, and ooh, there's stuff plugged in. Let me unplug these guys real quick. Yeah, those come unplugged. All right, good. I was worried. I didn't think that came unplugged for a second. Jeez. All right, so we have a, a lot of stuff happening here. Let me get these screws out. A lot of stuff's going on here. I'm, I'm a little surprised, actually. So we know that the front kind of tries to mimic a Super Nintendo controller, right? At least it does its best with the button presses and everything. So I had a feeling the front was going to be very similar to a... I'll just leave that out for now. These are actually push uh, plugs for the, <clears throat> the, the bumpers, or I guess you'd say the shoulder buttons. They use the standard uh, like rubber plunger parts there that just connect two points to make to tell it that it's, do it, that it's pushing. You can see them here. They're very standard. Um, they're they're pretty pretty much what we always use in a lot of controllers now. Uh, even like for example, that looks very similar to what the 360 uh, 360 D pad pads actually look like inside. And a couple more plug, a couple more screws here. Look like it's holding it in. These are soldered, and this is for again the controller board. Let's take these out real quick. So the screen is connected, of course, on this side. Um, it looks like just a standard ribbon cable is holding it in on here. And then, of course, the speakers are soldered directly to it. So that's fun because they can't be plugged in, right? That'd just be too much money, I guess. That's a lot of times how people, how companies will save money. They'll just solder these things directly to it. Um, same with this side over here. You have the D-pad and, of course, all the buttons there. Um, the looks like the speakers, like I said, they're just they're just soldered in. <laughs> they're not. They're just hanging off. So. This is pretty straightforward. This looks like this has everything you need to control the screen, the audio, and of course the button presses. Nothing about the actual, um, what is it, the circuit board itself. Like the processor is not on this board. This looks like this just has a pass-through for the screen, speakers, and then of course all your buttons and everything here. And that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward to be honest. Here's our screen. Let's pull this guy out. Looks like it comes right out. This is a very basic screen. <laughs> this is nothing fancy. Um, this could actually be uh, probably a very similar to say, you know how you get those backup cameras on Amazon where people will use those to modify? These are probably very similar to that. Um, they're probably not very different at all, actually. So they may have even decided to use those. Um, but it just sits, it looks like it just sits in there behind this, uh, the plastic. So not fancy at all. It's very standard stuff, um, which, which is fine because you have to cut costs in a lot of places. And in this case, they decided to use a very standard or at least proven screen. And um, I'm fine with that. It, it makes sense. Um, buttons, D-pad, all that stuff pops right out. It's not glued in or anything. It just falls out. And they do have a little guide here to help you put it back in correctly. But uh, overall, I mean, that's a pretty standard look at the inside shell. Let's take a look 
a little further where the processor and everything is. See if we can spot it, because there's a lot of basic looking chips on here, which means they probably have not used anything super fancy. It's probably just a very standard chip set on this guy. So here is the main board. This is what we're looking at here. And I see you see a lot of chips here. One of these is probably the processor used. Again, it's only playing Super Nintendo games. It doesn't need anything very powerful. Obviously, you can emulate Super Nintendo games with not much at all. So let me let me pull this guy out though, so we can also look at the cartridge slot. That'll be cool. These, what is this running to? There's something here that's soldered. It's running to something. Let's let's pull this guy out and see what that's running to. Okay, so it's soldered to the, uh, this is soldered straight to where the battery would plug in. They even super, they, well not super glue, it looks like they they uh, use a little screw to hold it down and so that'll just come right out if I unscrew it. They use hot glue, it looks like, just to help reinforce it so you don't accidentally push it out. There we go. So here's our main board. The, the, uh, these are just um, the top parts. Uh, this is the car, oh man, this is the cartridge slot and this looks like something that like somebody online would probably even make up. It's, um, hmm. It actually, it looks hand soldered too. If you look here, this looks hand soldered. You can, it's gonna be hard to see it, but if you see those blobs of solder on top in here, that's like something you get if you hand soldered something. So this is interesting. It was made in China. There's a good chance that this was kind of assembly lined, you know what I mean? Like by people, because if you look here also, I can actually see some mistakes in their soldering. It works, so they're not gonna correct it. They're not gonna make it look super pretty since no one's gonna see this except for, I guess, myself and maybe some other people that take it apart. So I understand why they didn't go back and maybe add some flux and make it look nice and neat. But this looks to be hand soldered together, at least these parts do. Everything else looks like it would have gone through like an oven kind of, um, because usually how you do it, you'll put like solder paste down for these chips especially with all these little pins, you put it through like an oven and it cooks the solder to a point where it melts and then it just seizes to the board after it dries. This though looks like they got these made up custom somehow in some way. And then like these PCBs that go between them, maybe they just printed them or had them fabricated and then just hand soldered these different slots. So it looks like there is at least one. So this is just a Super Nintendo cartridge slot. You can get these on DigiKey from what I remember. It looks like they just did that. They soldered it on and that's how they got that um, that different angle. So you know how like we put a game in backwards here, but we know the board is here. Obviously it's not underneath of it to accept it. So they had to do use a right angle board and that's how they did it. That's interesting. It looks like these guys are also on their own board that has actually marking PCB03 right there. Uh, so these are on their own PCBs. It's just hanging out in there. Uh, doesn't look like much is underneath of it, so this is probably just a pass-through to this port here that then runs, of course, to this port here that is just straight soldered on as well. Both of these are all just completely soldered on. Um, that's interesting. So that, I have to say, internally, this is a cheaply made system, so don't buy the system expecting something that is built well, especially after seeing this part, <laughs> where it is completely hand-soldered by what I seem to soon be an assembly line in China, because it's made in China. Does that make sense? Yes, it's it's very standard. Uh, the, the chips look to be basic, although I do have some markings here. I'm gonna look these chips up and see what we get, guys. All right, guys, so I did some quick research on these chips. So we know, I, I'm looking at a couple chips here. I'm gonna read them off to you. You have the TCT978, the TCT975, and the TCT976. One of those is a processor, like we, like we were thinking, that is the TCT978. CPU, you'll see these different chips here. These are all different ones that I'm talking about. They're all processing units. Um, one of those is the CPU. The other one is a PPU, okay? And what that is, it's a picture processing unit. And then we have a chip here that is designed to kind of clone the Sony SPC700. And if you don't know, the Sony SPC700 is the audio processing chip that Sony helped design with Nintendo for the Super Nintendo. This is probably gonna lead into a video later on, guys, but yes, Sony did have a hand in the Super Nintendo in the audio department. So that's how they're doing this. They're using these three chips. Believe it or not, though, I did uh, some more research. These are in the Retron 3. <laughs> these are the parts that make the Retron 3 tick for the Super Nintendo side. It appears that they just kind of pulled these off of their little assembly line for Retron 3, slap it in here, and away they go. 
So it's again, it's it's very if you if you understand the emulation behind the Retron 3 or you've had experience, you're getting the same experience with this model. So it's it's using the same type of chips they use there. And uh, honestly, it's probably pretty much the same, except that it's in a uh, handheld device. So that's it for now, guys. This is the Superboy S. This is the newest one that they have now released. And I hope you enjoyed a little look into this into this world of the, I guess, handheld Super Nintendo aftermarket uh, devices. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you next time.